Welcome back to the class and this is going to be my conclusion because someone said these words and I'm going to quote God is responsible for your healing you are responsible for your health God will heal you but you are responsible for your health what you eat how you take care of your temple the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit you are responsible for your health God is responsible for healing you but you are responsible to go and sin no more so that worse things do not happen to you go stop smoking cancer will not happen to you go stop drinking your liver will not fail go sin no more stop using drugs go in other words you are responsible many people don't want to hear that they are responsible and that's why i'm not going to pray for anybody who has not gone through this class because they need to understand their part i'm not the deliverance minister i'm a teacher of the word of god i help you see it for yourself so that even if i'm not here you can have it for yourself it's in the word so retaining deliverance is as important as receiving it jesus said something in matthew chapter 12 that made this teaching very important matthew 12 verse 43 When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he finds, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. In other words, when a demon spirit, when a sickness or a disease leaves your body, after we pray, you're going to receive. That spirit will go away. But in verse 44, then Satan says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. This verse is written to talk to the wicked generation, not to the church. Not to those who are blood-bought and have chosen to walk in the ways of God. This is specifically for those who are wicked in this generation. That if you get delivered and you don't walk with God, and you don't stay with the Lord, but you go back and you don't get filled with God and your vessel is empty, Satan will come back with the seven stronger demons and the state of that person will be worse than before. I don't want you to be the type that gets delivered here and goes out there and gets worse than you had before. So I want to help you. Jesus said some things that are important to help you retain your deliverance. Shut every door and Satan will not come back. Shut the door and Satan will not come back. John chapter 8 verse 31. John chapter 8 verse number 31. First principle is... Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you abide, another version says, If you continue in my word. In other words, you need to continue in God's word. When you get delivered, you need to continue in God's word. You need to know the truth, and the truth shall, shall make you free that knowledge you need to continually increase in the knowledge of god if you want to stay delivered 
continually increasing the knowledge of God, being planted in a local church. I do not recommend people who refuse to be planted in a local church to go through deliverance because they will most likely lose it for lack of continuation in the word of God. Number three, be in a church, be planted. Psalms 92 verse 12. Psalms 92 verse 12. I know there are people who don't believe in the local church. It's your problem. I can help you. Because you choose to believe what you want and you should take the consequences for it, quite honestly. But for those of you who are struggling with that, let me help you to overcome that mindset because you could have been hurt in a church. But God never intended to put the church together to hurt you. He put it to help you. And this is what he says, Psalms 92, verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. In other words, if you are planted well in the local church, you will flourish. We find it in the book of Acts. Those who continued in the apostles' teaching, they were edified through that teaching. They were learning doctrine. They were learning worship. They were learning how to work in unity. In other words, being planted in a local church helps you to flourish. And this is how you flourish. Blessed is the man, Psalms 1.1. 1, 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. The church, the local church, helps you develop godly relationships. Being outside the church and not wanting to be part of the church, you can end up in ungodly relationships. But the Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. In the local church, the word of God is taught so that you can meditate on it day and night. Many people who have come to IOC, they've told me, I've learned a lot, I've grown, I've, uh, things have changed in my life. Because now my mind is renewed by God's word. And the Bible says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in, in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Those who are planted well in the house of God, they flourish, they grow, and they produce fruit in all seasons, and in whatever they do, they prosper. It's important to get planted in a local church that, to help you to retain your deliverance. Also, in the local church, you learn how to submit to authority. Rebellion is the key to being bowed. When you are walking in rebellion, you are opening your life for Satan to have a way in your life. Illegitimate authority, rebellion, brings in bondage. And so the local church provides you with the relationships where you can be accountable, where you can develop a relationship with other people, where you can know how to relate to authority, know how to be part of a community, know how to be part of even a team that prays together, that walks together, that watches over each other. Amen. It's a place of freedom. But now, if you want to retain your deliverance, go clean up your house. Remove the pornography from the house. Don't you dare try to get delivered and go right back to the mess that you left. Clean the pig pen. Get all the junk out of the trunk. Get the house cleaned. Remove and delete all those images on your computer. Amen. Shut the door for the enemy. Remove all those videos of pornography in the house. Remove all the items of a court. Remove all those paraphernalia of shamanism. Remove all those books of Freemasonry and Satanism. Get rid of those meditation books and those uh, or Ouija boards. Get rid of any junk in your house 
that God says this is not right for you. If you walk through the house, room to room, you see posters of nude people in the, on, the, on, the, on the walls and all those kind of things. Just go yanking them out. Go room to room. Anything God tells you to remove, get rid of it. Don't argue with it. Shut out all those Kimball stuff that bring in nudity and pornography and, 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 and swear and cursing. Clean all your deck of, of, of cards and all your deck of CDs and, and iPad and iPod. Clean all that stuff. Clean out all the, all the junk of cursing and swearing music. Clean it out and put worship music. Amen. Amen. Do a house cleaning. Now, the other thing you need to do to retain your deliverance, fill the void. The room Satan had needs to be filled. And I'll read John 7 verse 38. John 7. Here we go. John chapter 7. I'll start with verse 38. On the last day that that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, and as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom the believing, whom those who believe in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. In other words, Jesus says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Just let the living waters flow through your belly. Be filled. Every void in you, let it be filled. Amen. And finally, this is my favorite scripture. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 12. Actually, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame Satan, they overcame him, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to the death. Overcome Satan by testifying and by being strong in the word. After you get healed, tell someone about it. Give God the glory for it. When you do that, it gives God the glory. It helps you overcome. Amen. When you know that God has done it for you and you testify, you seal it. You seal it. So I want to seal every miracle with the blood of the Lamb and with the word of my testimony. When you seal it with the blood, you seal it with your testimony, Satan cannot take it away. I guarantee you, this victory shall not be stolen. Now, do anything you can to make sure you meditate on this teaching and all the assignments that we've given you to do. I want you to be participant in your own deliverance and meet me here and the prayer partner is going to explain to you the next time when I come to pray for you in person. And I want you to come ready. We're going to put you through a time of prayer where you'll learn how to pray. Amen. We're going to put you through a time of worship. We're going to have you participate in your own deliverance. And we're going to have you come with an expectation. And God is going to meet you at the point of your expectation. Some of you, God will visit you even before that day. Because your hunger level is up. You know the truth. And when you know the truth, you'll be free. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. The knowledge you have right now is enough to set you free. I'll see you again here. God bless you.